For more on the week ahead, as well as that strong October jobs data that we saw, let's bring in Allianz and Gramercy's advisor, Mohamed El Arian. He's also the president of Queens College, Cambridge. And Mohamed, uh, looking at the markets, it's all systems go. We're looking at new highs for at least five of the major averages, many of the major sectors. What, what's happening here? Nothing to be concerned about? More of the same, Becky, and that is that the liquidity conditions and the lack of alternatives continues to attract money into the stock market. You know, last week was fascinating because the stock market was steady, normal gains. The bond market was crazy volatile. Yeah. And that shows you the, the, the big split we have right now between an equity market that's very comfortable about flows and a bond market that's trying to guess what central banks are going to do and what inflation is going to do. Could they both be right? I mean, you could see the markets continue, the stock market continuing to push higher, even if there are some bumps in the road along the way, and even if the central bank starts kind of reining things in. There are a lot of people who said that's way overdue. Yeah, and I'm one of them. And we saw that the tapered decision did not cause any big drama. I just wish they had done it earlier. Yes, we can live in a world like this for a while, as long as the mindset in the market is relative. Relative valuation will continue to favor not just the stock market and stocks, but will also favor crypto, because people feel that there's no diversifier. The bond market is too distorted to be diversifier, and there's no good inflation hedge. So, so as long as the mindset remains relative as opposed to absolute, we can. What makes it absolute is a policy mistake. I was going to say, what, what, when are we ever going to not look at things on a relative basis? I mean, if you find that equities are a better place than other place to put your money, isn't that always what's going to happen? No. So let me give you an example. Um, you know, when you get a big shock to the marketplace, you get an increase in risk aversion uh. and you get a, a reversal. So what would be this big shock that we have to avoid is a policy mistake. For example, the Fed being too slow and then having to slam on the brakes and sending the economy into recession. That's not a baseline, but that's a risk. That's the sort of thing that can change mindsets from relative to absolute. Hopefully, we can avoid that. I mean, I, I get your point that there are times when people feel safer with their money in a mattress than, than in any other investment that they could possibly pick. But even if the Fed did slam on the brakes, it's hard to imagine that you think your money's going to be safer on a mattress if inflation is running rampant. Yeah, it's a question of, of, of how much you risk losing. Um, on inflation, you're talking about small single digit. On the marketplace, if there is a policy mistake, you're talking about double digits. So, mm -hmm. so that's the difference. Um, and we don't have a historical experience where the Fed has been late in tightening and hasn't sent us into recession. If you send us into recession, earnings get hit two ways. One is, of course, the amount that is sold. And two is pricing power. So that's why we need to avoid that situation. Mohammed, yesterday the New York Times had a story on the front page about how this economy looks great and some people are still feeling the pain. So how do you kind of put those two together? And then the journal this morning kind of asking the question that things are great here, but which economy is going to stand up and take over from here? Um, what, I know that the markets aren't the economy, but when you're looking at the economy, what, what do you see coming? So I think the best um, analogy was The Economist this week that said that the global economy is like a badly microwaved meal. Some parts <laughs> are hot, some parts are just right, and some parts are cold. And that somehow the global up. economy, yeah, it needs stirring up. It needs a little bit of better coordination. So we have an incredibly dispersed economy. I, I, you know, the U.S. is just fine. Because the demand side is strong, we have to pay attention to the supply side. That is a bit of an issue. Um, but the demand side in the U.S. is very strong. You go elsewhere in China, both the demand and supply are an issue. So, you know, you have a very dispersed global economy. And in terms of economic analysis, you've really got to do a lot of granular work.